بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله Welcome to the first lesson of our Ramadan program Before we begin with Surah Al-Fatiha I want you to begin, begin with the ta'awwudh because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that before you recite the Quran say the ta'awwudh so I just want you to go in that chronological order because we're going to go for the tasmiyah as well so when you recite the Quran you say the ta'awwudh which is a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem then you say the tasmiyah which is bismillahir rahmanir rahim then you begin your recitation so I want you to go in that order so we begin with the ta'awwudh the ta'awwudh is a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem A'udhu is I am seeking protection Billahi with Allah Min From a shaytan The shaytan Ar-Rajim The eternally accursed Now we're going to go through a few of these words Now shaytan Can be From The humans and jinn And they are sinful by nature So they are major- mainly from Or the majority of them are from The jinn so it's not just one shaytan, there's many plur- uh, plural, so shayateen is the plural. The shaytan is of course Iblis, he's the main one, because he made that promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's going to try and cause all of insan, all of mankind to go off the path. He approached them from the front, from the back, from the right, from the left. So he made this promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala straight after disobeying Allah. He made dua to Allah and Allah granted him the ability to live until the end of times, to attempt doing that. And then as a counter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that whoever turns to me seeking forgiveness, he will have that forgiveness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows we are weak by nature. We will make, you know, we will make mistakes. We will sin. Sometimes we will do one of major sins. Sometimes we do many, many minor sins. And minor sins should never ever be neglected as, oh, they're only minor. Rather, we should try and perfect ourselves, cleanse ourselves, especially in this month of Ramadan, where the purpose of fasting is, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you may attain God consciousness. Now, what is taqwa? Taqwa in itself is fearing Allah. And then that leads to you doing two things. Staying away from sins and doing extra good deeds. So know who your enemy is and we will talk about shaitan more when we get to the tafsir of Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. And then we have Ar-Rajim, which is a curse in, for shaitan that they are removed from any of, they are devoid of any good and they are humiliated. So we are asking Allah for protection against shaitan and then we are essentially saying to shaitan you are humiliated, you are far from any good, keep away from me, Allah I need your protection against, away, against him. A'udhu billahi min shaitan rajim Now when do we say this? Before we recite the Quran, so as I mentioned before, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when you recite the Quran, فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Then seek Allah's protection against shaitan because shaitan will come to you and will say, you know, you've recited enough. you got to catch up on your TV shows. You need to um, do something else and something else will come to you and question you and make you question yourselves. فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ Seek the protection of Allah. When you have a bad thought. So sometimes you get whispers, right? And if you... What you need to do essentially is try to figure out Is this coming from myself? Or is this coming from something else? Is is this a bad thought or is this a good thought that's coming to my mind? Is it a mind that is it, is it a thought that's useless? Because shaitan is not necessarily he might not just make you make a sin He might also make you procrastinate because the procrastination is also a tool of shaitan To make you delay, for example, Salah. So he might make you procrastinate on Instagram, for example, or YouTube, or reading some unnecessary article, which can wait and which will be there. Or a football match, 
which you you can watch the highlights for. He'll make you procrastinate and make you delay your thoughts so that you miss something. So if you have a bad, bad thought, say, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. If you hear of a bad action, so say for example, uh, somebody says, uh, you know, I'm gonna, uh, I had so and so did this sin. Then we can say, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم, meaning I am asking Allah's protection against that sin, uh, against that sin. You can make it plural by saying نعوذ بالله. So instead of أعوذ بالله, you can make it نعوذ بالله. Make it plural. All right. So for example. Um, if somebody told me about sin and I was telling you, oh, this person, you know, he deliberately broke his fast, then I could say, Na'udhu Billah, may Allah protect us from that. Morning, and e- morning, evening, and before sleeping. So there are your morning athkar, your evening athkar, and athkar before you sleep, athkar after you pray salah, athkar you could do throughout the day. These are designed to protect you. So Ayatul Kursi, for example, it's there that you read it in the morning and it protects you from shaitan during the day. You read it in the evening and Ayatul Kursi will protect you during the night. Allah will assign an angel to protect you. When remembering a bad dream, so if you wake up and you remember a bad dream, the etiquette, what we are told by the Prophet ﷺ is not to tell other people about that bad dream. Because... If you tell other people about that bad dream, you're going to end up thinking about it more. But it was just a dream. So, if you have a bad dream, say, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. Do three dry spittles to your left shoulder. And then turn to the other side that you were sleeping on. So, for example, if you woke up, you were sleeping on your left side, turn to your right side. Just make sure you don't sleep on your front. The best thing is to sleep on your right hand side according to the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And also dua for yourself and others. So there's uh, a dua that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that Ibrahim Alayhi Salam, the Prophet Ibrahim Alayhi Salam would say for his two sons, i.e. Ismail and Ishaq Alayhi Salam. Now, I'm just going to give you the version of for ourselves, if I was to say this for myself. Uh, actually, I'll give you both versions. So if I was to say this for myself, it would be أعوذ بكلمات الله تامة من كل شيطان وهامة ومن كل عين لامة To do it on somebody else, instead of saying أعوذ, you say أعيذ, أعيذ. So one is أعوذ, which is I'm asking for myself. Another one is أعيذ, which is I'm asking for you. Okay? So he would say أعيذكما I am seeking the protection for you both. أعوذ بكلمة أعيذكم كما بكلمات الله التامة من كل شيطان وهامة ومن كل عين لامة. So that is one dua that you should also do, do for your children and for your loved ones as well. Inshallah, we'll, we'll, that that will come up in the adhkar session as well. Now there are different variations that you can say. So أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم is by far the popular one. There are other ones that the Prophet ﷺ would say. So one is an addition with just two of the names of Allah. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم. السميع, the all-hearing. العليم, the all-knowing. From shaitan, the accursed. And then there's an extended version again in the hadith. أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم من همزه ونخه ونفثه. Here you have همزه from his evil suggestions, his evil whispers. نفخه his puffing up and نفثه نفخ and نفث they're closely related. نفخ is a type of like I said um, after you, for example, when you have a bad dream, you say أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. Then you do dry spittles to your left shoulder. When I say with no spittles, with no like liquid coming out, with no spittle coming out at all, just blows. That's نفخ. Noon fa kha, that's nafh. Nafth with noon fa tha is when there's a bit of spittle. So when it comes to the science of ruqya, for example, the protection before going to bed, we are informed to recite Surah Al Nas, Surah there's other stuff as well. So Surah Al Fatiha, Ayat Al Kursi, uh, last two eyes of Surah Al Baqarah, Surah Al Kafirun, which is a protection against disbelief, Surah Al Ikhlas, Surah Al Falak, Surah Nas. Okay? When you read this, the Prophet ﷺ, after reading Falaq al-Nas, 
he would cup his hands and do spittles in his hand. Now they could be naf, they could be dry spittles, or they could be naf with a bit of spittle. He would do that, then he would put wipe his entire body starting from his head all the way down to whatever he could reach. So do that for yourself. So recite those, blow it on your blow in your hands, wipe it over your body. Do the same for your children. Spit in their hands and teach them to wipe over their body. If if, if they're too young, um, do it for do it for them. Okay, it's a form of protection. Now, inshallah, we've got ta'awwud covered. I want to actually begin with Surah Al-Fatiha. Now, with Surah Al-Fatiha, as I mentioned, we're not going to be covering the entire Surah Al-Fatiha today because it's, there's quite a lot of gems that we can get from it. But we will cover at least four ayat, inshallah ta'ala. We begin with the names and virtues. Now, know that when it comes to Quranic surahs, they have mo- many surahs have multiple names. So Surah Al-Fatiha will have multiple names. Surah Tawbah, is also, which is the ninth surah, is also known as Surah Al-Bara'a. Right? The surahs have multiple names. Surah Isra, Surah Bani Israel, the 17th chapter. This is based on the themes that occur, the content that happens, and what it's known by in different hadith. Now, when it comes to Surah Al-Fatiha, there are different names, and many of these are virtues. So, for example, Fatiha Al-Kitab. Now, if you think about Surah Al-Fatiha, Nowhere in the surah does it mention Al-Fatiha. Nowhere does it mention the word Fatiha at all. So where does this come from? There's a hadith about Fatiha Al-Kitab. It is the opening of the book. Al-Fatiha, the opening. Then there's two similar names. The mother of the Quran, Umm Al-Quran and Umm Al-Kitab. Al-Kitab here means the Quran, refers to the Quran. So these are the names of the of Surah Al-Fatiha. Then you have as sabu Mathani. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to as sabu Mathani, i.e. Surah Al-Fatiha. An-Nur. So when it comes to this hadith, there was an angel that came down from a gate that had never been opened before. And he came down and he gave glad tidings for two lights that the Prophet ﷺ received. One is Surah Al-Fatiha and the other is the last two ayahs of Surah Al-Baqarah. And that is something that Ustad Basil will cover. The next one is as salah because your salah is not valid without Fatiha. Ad dua because Surah Al Fatiha is a dua. Al shifa because Surah Al Fatiha is a shifa, it is a cure. And Al Ruqya, another form of cure. So when it comes to these, there are many hadith about how the Sahaba would recite Surah Al-Fatiha on people that were afflicted with, whether it be a scorpion bite, snake bite, or an illness, they will recite Surah Al-Fatiha and the person would be cured. Yeah, So Surah Al-Fatiha in it of itself is a cure. A bit more about Surah Al-Fatiha. So it was a surah that is that was revealed in Mecca. There is a difference of opinion, a minority say Medina, However, there's a lot of uh, back and forth regarding that, but it appears that the strongest one is Mecca. It was the first complete surah revealed. So you know that the first ayat revealed were from Surah Al-Alaq. So Iqra' bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, which we'll do in two days time, the first five ayat. But the first surah that was revealed in its entirety, i.e. all of it and it's complete, was Surah Al-Fatiha. And it is a conversation between Allah and His worshipper. This is something that will be a consistent theme throughout our conversation, throughout our conversation today and tomorrow. Now, the actual tafsir we begin, inshallah. The first ayah, according to many, is Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Now, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. It is mentioned in the Quran a hundred and fifteen times. 113 of those are surahs. Now, how many surahs are there in the Quran? 114. So that means there's one surah that doesn't begin with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, and that is Surah Tawbah, the ninth surah. And I'm not going to go into that re- the reason for that. You can research that in, in your own time. The other times the phrase Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim is used in, is in Surah Al Naml. So when um, Sulaiman alayhi salam is penning a letter to the queen, Queen Sheba. Then he writes, begins that letter with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, 
And then the phrase Bismillah is used also, just the word Bismillah is used in Surah Hud when Nuh alayhi salam embarks on the ark and he says Bismillahi majreha wa mursaha inna rabbi la ghafurur rahim. So he begins, uh, the, the boat starts to move and he begins with Allah's name. And this is a sunnah of Nuh alayhi salam that when you embark on a boat or on a ship, you say Bismillahi majreha wa mursaha inna rabbi la ghafurur rahim. Uh, same when you go, when you travel, Bismillah, Tawakkaltu. Bismillah is used continuously and it can be said many, many, uh, in many, many instances. So before you start anything, before you start eating, before you start traveling, uh, before wudu, before sleeping, you say Bismillah in its different variations. And encourage your children to say this as well, Bismillah. Say it out loud, Bismillah rahman rahim there's a dua for body, bodily pain. Bismillah, Bismillah, Bismillah. A'udhu billahi wa qudratihi min sharima ajidu wa hadir. So again, beginning with Bismillah. And your morning and evening adhkar, um, which again, we'll get to towards the end. So always begin Bismillah. Try to get your tongue familiar with saying Bismillah, Bismillah, Bismillah. You turn the car on, Bismillah. You eat your food, Bismillah. You start your work, Bismillah. Then we get to ayah two. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdu is a noun which means there is no time. When it comes to noun in language, there's, it's not stuck in the past, present or future. It is for all of time. And it is a praise for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of time. And the amazing thing is, this is different to thanks. Praise includes thanks. So when you say thank, thank you, thanks does not include praise because thank you is done as a result of an action, as a result of receiving an action. Whereas praise is done regardless of whether the action was received or not, or whether the action was done or not. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worthy of praise. Whether we praise him or not, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pra pra worthy of praise. Alhamdulillah. That is what Alhamdulillah is. Allah is uh, the infinite praise, that in internal praise is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabb is the one who nurtures. So if you think about the word tarbiya, tarbiya is a word refer that you use to refer to when bringing up children right when when you bring up your even when you when you were being brought up tarbiya the um upbringing the characteristics that you're taught with the what you know your mannerisms that you're taught with how to conduct yourself that is tarbiya that is your nurturing right and different parents will pay, place different emphasis some will be very relaxed and those parents that are very relaxed you know those children are missing out on that that tarbiyah. So for parents, it's essential to learn how to correctly raise your children, right? And ask those questions to somebody. You know, you might be having a situation that you, you've never experienced before. You know, parenting, you, you can't learn parenting from a book, right? There's tips everywhere. You can't learn, there's no one way of parenting. Every child is different. My oldest is different to my youngest. My children are different to somebody else's children, right? Every child needs a unique set of um, uh, a unique approach but there's also an Islamic aspect of it all right Islam is amazing in the sense that in 23 years the Prophet ﷺ was able to change the way people think the way people act he was able to change all of humanity and that's a miracle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed the Prophet ﷺ with now when it comes to tarbiyah we have to raise our children in a sense that and especially when early on is better because that is when they're developing their foundations, right? So this is why is that's the time to teach them Bismillah before you eat, Alhamdulillah. Because when they get older, when they get to their late teens and they become in their 20s and 30s, that's when they start thinking by themselves. And that's when, that's when they're a bit of rebellion, a bit of, I can do this by myself, I can research this by myself. But the thing is, right? When something is grounded from a young age, it sticks with you like a, it, sticks, it sticks with you. It becomes habitual. And so it's essential to have good and correct Islamic etiquettes from that early age. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Rabb. He develops in stages. He is the master worshipper. It is the master worshipper relationship, one of kindness, mercy, and need. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
is worthy of all praise for all of time because he is the one that nurtures al-alamin now the common translation is the world but it doesn't really truly mean the world as in the earth that's ard all right alamin is the one who nurtures all forms of existence whether that's the angels the jinns the humans the animals the earth the sun the moon the stars the entire galaxy all of space all of the, all of creation allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nurtures all forms of existence and if you think about what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has has done for us he has placed earth such a distance from sun that if we were a bit closer to it we would burn if we were a bit further away from it we would you know, there would be no life there would be no life that there's water on this earth that there's oxygen allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put the perfect conditions for us he has nurtured it for us and we are not people that have come about because of evolution we don't believe in that we believe in what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he created adam alayhi salam and adam alayhi salam and hawa alayhi salam were descended upon this earth were put on this earth and we are uh, we are their children that is what we believe so alhamdulillah rabbil alamin the infinite the timeless praise is for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who has nurtured everything that exists and that is impactful that is an amazing statement that is so after you say bismillahir rahmanir rahim you say alhamdulillah rabbil alamin now when you say this like i mentioned before the surah al fatiha is a conversation qala allah ta'ala allah the most high says qasamtu as salah bayni wa bayna abdi nisfain i have divided the prayer between me and my worshiper and here you see the prayer i.e. referring to surah al-fatiha so here we get the name as-salah that surah al-fatiha is known as as-salah wa li 'abdi ma sa'al and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he has divided the prayer fatiha between himself and between his worshiper and the worshiper will have what he asks for so then we say alhamdulillah rabbil alamin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds hamadani 'abdi my worshiper has praised me allah is responding and then we go to ayah number 3 ar-rahman ar-rahim now these are in the bismillah but i didn't speak about it there because there's a ayah specifically about it ar-rahman and ar-rahim okay so now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ana ar-rahman i am ar-rahman wa hiya ar-rahim i created the womb shaqqatu laha isman min ismi and i derived a name for it from my name now if you think about the womb and what happens in the womb of a mother how the semen goes into the egg and a child is born one of the greatest miracles that i have seen is child birth how one second there's a there's a baby that's there that's coming out and it's lifeless and then it starts crying and then that life just kicks in for me that is one of the miracles that i've seen in my life and it's an amazing amazing miracle that a child comes out of the womb and think about how much love mercy protection nurturing that that mother has for that child during pregnancy after pregnancy throughout that child's life so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is thinking of the closest affectionate name or affectionate part part of a, a woman's body and allah is saying i've divided uh, derived that word from my name because allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful the most affectionate and so we have the entirely merciful and then we have ar rahim now what is the difference between the two they are nouns indicating ar rahman is one by nature and ar rahim is by action so you do something and you get a mercy ar rahman is an attribute connected to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so the word the name ar rahman is something exclusive for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now many people you, you may know have the name abdul something right and you shouldn't just call somebody somebody abdul because abdul means slave of it's it's an incomplete sentence yeah you might have somebody called abdul subhan abdul samad abdullah abdul rahman abdul rahim when it comes to the name ar rahman you cannot call somebody rahman that is for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like you have abdullah and ar, ar abdul rahman you're not going to call someone allah you cannot call someone rahman they have to have abdul rahman or baidur rahman for example 
Yeah, but when it comes to other names, you can call somebody Rahim, you can call somebody, somebody Subhan, and you can call somebody Sami' and etc. But you cannot call them Ar Rahim, the mercy, especially merciful, because that is Allah, right? And Ar Rahim is an attribute connected to the recipient of mercy, i.e., the believers. So it is a mercy for all of creation. Ar Rahman is a mercy for all of creation. So we mention Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the nurturer of all of creation. And that mercy is for all of creation. Then you have Ar Rahim. And that is a specific mercy for the believers when they do a good deed and they receive that in the hereafter. And the final thing is Inna rahmati ghalabat ghadabi My mercy overpowers my anger. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Ask Allah. Allah wants you to ask him. And so we mentioned that Ar-Rahman links in nicely to Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahim now links in nicely to the next ayah which is uh, Maliki Yawmiddin. But before we get to that, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. When you say that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Athna alayya abdi. My worshipper has exalted me. So when you say that, the next ayah is Maliki Yawmiddin. Malik is the one that has, possesses something in a manner that he can do whatever he wants with it. He can do whatever he wants with it. He can destroy it because he has that right. This is Malik. And then on the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fold the heavens and he will say, Ain al Jabbarun, where are the tyrants? Ain al Mutakabbirun, where are the proud today? And then he will fold the earth. And he will say the same thing. Ain al Jabbarun, Ain al Mutakabbirun. Where are the tyrants and where are the proud today? He will say this on the day of judgment. So those tyrants that are affecting our brothers and sisters, whether they're Muslim or not, those that are being proud in the world, know that they will be ultimately accountable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And on that day, he does not do any form of zulm, any form of injustice to anybody. And then you have ad deen So yaw means day. ad deen is recompense, right? So requital for actions. Recompensated, so think about that. Requital for your actions and reckoning for them. So if you did good deeds, you get a requital for that. And if you did bad, you're going to be reckoned for that. So he is the master of the day of recompense, the day in which he will not oppress anybody. The day in which he will be absolute just because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most just he's after we say this maliki yawmiddin allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds majadani abdi my worshipper has glorified me and there's another one that says fawwada ilayya abdi as well and in summary we have we begin with the Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We begin everything with Bismillah, with, with the Bismillah, and then we say Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala responds, Hamadani Abdi. Then we say Arrahmanir Rahim. Allah responds, Athna Alayya Abdi. Then we say Maliki Yawmiddin, and He says Majadani Abdi. And then the rest of the ayat, Inshallah, we will cover tomorrow. Lessons that we can learn from today. Ta'awudh, understand your enemy. Shaitan is an enemy to us. Treat him like an enemy. Next thing is the tasmiyah. Begin everything with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name. Al-Fatiha, the ayat that we have covered right now, all focus on worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 